Right, so today what we're looking at here is uh, doing the rear heater matrix on a Volkswagen T4 van. This is the uh, VR6 engine. I've got the radiator out and everything like that because of the thermostat, which is all the way buried down there. Um, but what happened is I found that when I was uh, driving, I had steam come into the vehicle, which is from uh, from from this heater outlet here, which is in the middle of the floor. Sometimes they're just here behind the driver's seat. But uh, when I removed the, uh, the actual thing from the, the holster, and kind of look down inside, you can just about see that pool of water in there and the collector on the heater matrix there, which means there's a hole somewhere. Um, I had been wondering if it was damp from the uh, coming in from some leak or other, find its way through the carpet, but you know, with that with that level there of corrosion and whatnot, it's clearly coming from the heater matrix. So I've got a new one um, which I'm gonna look to fit. And uh, what I did is I've already drained the coolant out from. Uh, I can even get under here and see it. There's this hose underneath that supplies the heater box, which is just there. And uh, the heater matrix is um, just up in there. So what I'm gonna look to do, so I'm gonna look to, uh, I'm gonna look to actually remove this whole unit as one. And then once that's removed, I should be able to get the heater matrix. Right, so one of the first things that uh, I actually did with this, obviously you can see at the moment I've actually got the carpet out because I'm looking to change the interior. So there are actually these uh, these quite long screws that you actually have to remove from the top. So once you remove those, that that means there's nothing there's nothing visible and there's nothing like kind of on the floor here holding it in from this time. So everything that you need to actually take this unit out from under the floor is on the underside of the van. So that's this side. Right, so here on the underside of the van, to actually release um, this whole unit, there's a couple of bits and pieces that you need to do. Uh, there's a few bolts um, that you need to sort of take out first. Um, by uh, to, to get to some of the mounting hardware, there's uh, actually what's the heat resistor, which is this thing here. Uh, it's held in place with uh, four little metric bolts that are seven mil heads. Now I'll have one in here so that I can actually get to uh, show you what's coming out. They're actually uh, they're not very long. They're quite a short little tiny thing that's not very in the light. And then this should just come out, which allows you access to one of the mounting locations just up there. Now. This is the heater resistor. It looks like it's seen better days, so I'm going to get the Dremel on it and clean it off, and hopefully, I mean, I've, that's probably a result of the leaking matrix at the moment. Now, equally, we, you have to take this out to get to this screw here, which is one of the clamps that holds in place, and exactly on the other side, there's one exactly the same, which you don't have to take anything off to actually get to it, but it's just because the connector to that resistor is right in the way. So. Then the other thing is this bit, this this jubilee clamp here, which is on the uh, flexible hose that goes to the step where it, uh, this this fan motor actually draws the air in from. So you've got those to remove, and then theoretically this I'm hoping is going to actually sort of drop down because just uh, just over here the um, you've got the two the two pipes on the matrix which are flexible. But it's like practically impossible to get anything onto the actual, um, you know, hose clamps. So you really still want to drop this down so you can actually get a pair of pliers on it, which is what I am going to do next. Right, this is the other side um, of the motor. I've uh, disconnected the motor itself. You'll see that there's a mounting clamp just here, and right up here on the cable, there's another screw, which allows you to actually get that out of the way. So you can see now it's actually sort of starting to come loose and uh, I think it's just sort of held in mainly by um, like these, uh, let's see if we can get a light up there. That's, if you have a look there you can just about see that like sort of hook bracket and um, that sort of sits on this chassis rail thing so it's sort of once you've undone the screws and the clamps you uh, you know, you don't just accidentally drop it out. 
So uh, the next bit is going to be trying to get this down so I can disconnect the water pipes. Right, so as we can see here, it's actually come loose. And that now gives you a bit of access to uh, actually unclamp the two hoses. Pull this, uh, this aluminium pan under here to catch any more of the liquid that's coming out. But it was literally just in place, hooking onto that rail and then you probably just about see the cable up there as like a clip on top um, and then that should be free so then the next bit's going to be after we've done that is uh, get this out and try and get that heater core out but it looks an awful lot like the uh, the screws are rusted off so that could be fun yet There we go. That's free. Now I can leave it to uh, drain out in that bowl for a little while. Right, here you go. This is the actual unit now finally out of the uh, the van. And uh, you can see a little bit better inside there the lovely growth. And also, uh, having a look at quite how bad it is actually inside there. It's uh it's actually quite surprising how uh how awful that's become. You wouldn't really know this unless you actually took it out. So if you have got heating problems or if you uh have uh experiencing a slight loss of water then this is certainly something to have a look at. Now the other thing I was saying uh, part of it earlier is these screws I think they're going to take a little bit of work to get out but uh, and I'll have to try and find some new screws for it because there's no way they're going back in and other than that I'm going to start on the process of cleaning this thing up and draining it right out and then we'll uh, go and find the new one screws but cut a big slot and get them out there are uh, some sort of uh, self tapper I don't know why they don't just use stainless on these but uh, you don't need to worry about protecting this because we're going to be changing the whole matrix screws taken out. I need to try and source some new ones of those. And if we can try to separate this thing, which might be easier said than done. Absolutely knackered. You can see it's rusted out along the bottom. That's probably what's caused it to leak in the first place. But uh, yeah, that's now fit for recycling slash. Now we've just got to uh, 
actually look at in there and you can see how lovely and yummy it is. Uh, time to give this a good old clean before putting the new, new unit back in. Right, so I gave this some thought uh, after saying that I need to give it clean, and I was having a look at the other side of uh, this unit, and the screws are not exactly great that hold the motor in either. So I thought, well, if I'm going to replace, I'm going to have to replace some anyway. So I thought, well, what I'll do if I take the motor out, um, probably going to like pressure wash this or something like that. Um, um, because of the kind of corrosion element kind of inside there, I was kind of thinking of using something like traffic film remover or alloy wheel cleaner, something a little bit acidic, because it's plastic, so the whole thing should, uh, this should, you know, kind of be resistant to that sort of thing, especially considering what it gets exposed to on the road underneath the van. But, uh, yeah, that's the next job. Pressure wash this out and um, then go hunting on eBay for some screws. Good. That's actually not too bad in there. It's uh, still all the part numbers. It's actually pretty clean that part. But then that means that all we've got left is a casing, which is just plastic. So we can pressure wash that, and make it nice like new. pressure wash, didn't even put some chemicals on, and aside from needing to let it dry out, it's kind of got rid of all the rubbish out of there. Anyway, so uh, basically, we need to just uh, leave this to dry out for a little while, get some screws, and we can start putting things back together. Right, so um, that's, uh, that's dried off quite nicely. And uh, inside there, we'll get a well, you can see it kind of looks a, a fair bit uh, cleaner inside. Um, I, I didn't actually apply anything to it, I just, uh, what I did was just use the pressure washer on it, which uh, seems to have done a lovely job. Um, in the meantime, I've also gone and had a look for some screws, which um, I struggled to get exactly the same screw. Um, so. The best I could do was something that's about the same length, and it's a uh, you know it's a self-tapper with a flanged head, exactly the same as original. But the, the original ones have got this funny sort of like double thread. Oh, focus there, is it? Um, so yeah, the uh, that's that's what we've got to play with. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start reassembling this now, um, and hope these are the right lengths. You can, you can't really go any longer. These are half inch. Uh, the new screws uh, because 
basically the next side's up's a bit long and some of the some of the uh, mounting holes are blind holes you don't want to go sort of splitting anything or, or whatnot so uh, yeah next job some assembly Now, uh, here's the um, new heater core that's going in. It uh, comes all nicely protected with cardboard. It comes with this foam seal you're supposed to wrap around the edges to uh, seal it in. I'm surprised they don't actually just fit it and rather than l leave it for the, uh, the user to put on as part of the manufacturing process. But basically, it's self adhesive. And it sort of goes all the way round there, so that when you uh, when you slot it in, it seals up against the edges nicely. Interestingly, there's like the holes are slightly different place. Well, it's possible to see on the you can see how how they're just slightly slightly out compared to where the old ones were. I think that's a difference with uh, aftermarket parts and plastic that's warped slightly over time. Everything moves a little bit. Sure, this won't be a problem for these screws, mind. Nice and new and sealed. Perfect. Now the other thing, uh, which we still haven't done yet, even though I've had time to do it, was uh, this this little beast, which is the uh, the heater resistor. It's what gives you the different speeds, which they mount um, right on the heater box, and then to keep it cool because it gets hot due to resistance, it uh, it actually just ahead of the the actual fan motor on the unit so it's uh so the fan there blows past it and through the heater core sort of thing so uh yeah uh got my drill out let's see how this goes um it, it's going to be better than than what it is anyway Well, it's better. Well, it still needs a bit more cleaning. 
So, we're looking at putting this back in now. Something I didn't notice when I was taking it out. And I've just had a bit of a look inside. There are these little studs here in the corner, which look like self-tapping screws. Now, when you go from the top, there are no self-tapping screws, so I think they're actually locators. Um, so I'm going to put it back in, we've got to make sure that uh, all the hangers and everything are out of the way, because this sort of was a, a slide-in hang-on affair with this, uh, this hook that's just sort of here. And it hooks onto this this funny shaped bit of rail here, and then it sort of like it pivots upwards. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get that done. It probably came out easier than it's actually gonna go back in because that's always always the way, isn't it? screws are just sort of actually like locators. I think that's kind of in. But uh I obviously need to do a bit more alignment on uh, on that on that pipe that side, stopping it from homing fully. But as you can um just about see with the motor to plug back in which is connected on the top. And then this bracket here which just swung itself round to actually hold the unit in and so there's one screw there. So actually went in the so far a bit easier than uh, I thought it was going to, but you know, so far. Alright, back on this side we can see that the uh, the thing hasn't like hooked into its bracket properly. So it's, it is just sort of hanging there in the moment, but I've got, got this, this pipe to mate up, which means I need to put that big uh, jubilee clip back on. Something else I've also done to make this a bit easier in the future to drain down is I've turned these uh, these clips round that hold the pipes onto the heat exchanger because one of the problems was where there's this heat shield for the exhaust and whatnot the uh, the clips are actually the exhaust side so you couldn't actually get any pliers on them because otherwise you probably could have done this uh, this heater matrix in place I, I mean apart from the fact that on this van it definitely wanted cleaning out so uh, yeah that's uh, that's the, the challenge as a try and get everything uh, aligned if I can and we're, we're getting close to it being back together. Right. You remember that lovely, uh, that lovely thing we cleaned earlier which is the resistor thingy? That's got to go in last. There's a very good reason for that, as I recalled, which is there's a fixing screw just there, which is uh, what holds the heat, heat unit in place. So you kind of got to leave this out till last, and then uh, and then there are just a, a few little tiny bolts, which weirdly, considering everything else is uh, like a self-tapper, these are on like a little brass insert. Um, so uh, you don't actually, unless they've really got bad heads, you don't need to replace those. But uh, so pipes I've connected, which are just up there a bit. Um, not really enough room to kind of get the camera in there and do anything. So, I've, but uh, turning the uh, turning the clips around definitely makes it easier for getting the pipes on and off. But I would say that you won't get this unit out. Um, with, uh, well, you know, the actual core without completely removing it the way that I've done in this video. So it is, it's one of those where I thought, oh, if the clips were just in an easier place, this would, this would be a piece of cake. No, no, not at all. You have to take it out because there's not enough clearance to actually slide this bit out, you know, like the entire, the entire thing come this way because of the exhaust. 
So uh, yeah, we're um, I'm just going to carry on putting some bolts in and connecting, and uh, we're um, we're pretty much done on this one.